I learned these, and it was we were talking beforehand. I learned it as Smarty. There was an extra um, letter at the end that, that had to do with celebrate when you achieve the goal. Hey, Islanders, and welcome up to episode 125 of the Commando Voice. Today, we're breaking away from our normal format, and it's going to be me and Lydia Crouch talking about goal setting. Hi, I'm Brandon Erickson, and you're listening to the Camino Voice podcast, where I interview folks around Camino Island and beyond. If you want to stay up to date on events, businesses, and even hear a little history of this area, subscribe to this podcast and share with your friends. Thanks for listening. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Camino Voice, where we release a new episode every Tuesday. This episode, like I said in the intro, we're doing a little bit different. Um, so we're really uh, we're going to be going over some goal setting um, in this episode, and it's actually going to end up being a two part episode. So, first part, we're going to go over goal setting. What are kind of the steps to set goals, and uh, you know what framework do you use to set goals, and how do you come up with those goals to begin with? Um, I had a lot of fun with this episode. I I love like goal setting and business planning and these different aspects. But a lot of times I get stuck in not doing them um, because I enjoy the collaborative aspect of them. Uh, and so once I sit down by myself to go do them, a lot of times I'll just sit there and, and twiddle my thumbs and then I'll get distracted by whatever pops up into my head. Um, so this was great for me. Uh, it kind of forced me to actually like put pen to paper, um, so to speak, and come up with some goals and ideas for what I want to do for this year. And so... Um, Lydia was kind enough to sit down with me and we were able to knock out, um, like I said, this first episode, going through and talking through how do you goal set? What are the steps to make a successful goal? And <clears throat> from there, uh, next week, we're going to launch into what are our goals for 2022? Uh, and so you're going to get to hear from us on, on what those are. So um, you know, I, I hope this episode's helpful for some of you guys. Um, I'm sure, again, most of you have probably heard most of what we've talked about. But for me, it's not about what I know. It's about what I need to be reminded about. And so hopefully this is a good reminder for you guys to sit down, check out some goals, um, you know, just come up with some. Uh, you know, take 15 minutes out of your day and, and come up with some goals that you would like to achieve by the end of 2022. And um, so anyways, I'd love to hear about what goals you guys have set. So you can always reach out to me at voice at CaminoCommons.com. Um, and so I'd love to hear from you from that. But without further ado, here's my conversation with Lydia about goal setting for 2022. Hey, Islanders, and welcome to another episode of the Camino Voice. Today we're doing a little bit of a special episode. Uh, instead of interviewing a guest and going through uh, kind of their life story and all of that, um, I really wanted to do some goal setting and planning for 2022. Um, but, uh, I didn't want to do it by myself. So I've invited Lydia Crouch back to the podcast. Hey guys. Um, and so we're going to go through goal setting. Uh, we're going to kind of just throw out and there might be a lot of processing of what goals are for this coming year uh, in this podcast. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to, I guess, formalize it and have it there so that, um, I can, I can have accountability there on, on some of these goals. So, uh, anyways, welcome to the podcast, Lydia. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, cool. Um, so before we get started, how was 2021 for you? You know, it was actually amazingly good. I, I think we went into it with, um, you know, the C word that we, we hate saying and thinking it was just going to be a depressing year. And it was not. It was fantastic. I had a, a very um, reasonable, modest financial goal for the loft and we tripled it and it was like we started off with seven artists when we started the loft and now we have almost 30 that wow. have come through and been featured and been part of shows and we had the Christmas show and, we, and rented out space and that was a huge success people loved it and learned a bucket load of what our clientele want and what they ignore I'm not going to say they don't want it, but they just don't notice. So we're trying to get them to notice. And um, yeah, so it was really fun. I really enjoyed the year. Good. Yeah, I think overall 2021 was a really good year for us as well. Just trying to, um, 
yeah, I think we didn't know what to expect moving into the year. Um, we were like, I think things are kind of going back to normal, but we don't really know what normal is anymore. And, um, you know, we had a good tourist season. I think a lot of people are discovering Kameno um, that maybe didn't know about it before or it wasn't as appealing as it was before. And now it's like, well, I don't have to get on a plane. I don't have to. I can just drive there. It's open air, so it's safe. Yeah. Um, there's actual things to do with the beaches and then I can get food on the way out or in and all the different things. And so, um, I think overall we had a really good, uh, good year. Now it's always caveat with that because I don't want to be like negative or anything, but like you can have a great sales year and yet your net that's left over at the end of the day mm-hmm. is less than what you've had previous years where you made less. Because things cost more. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like a little our, scary. Our cups have like increased by at least 50%. Many of our really? paper products have doubled in cost. So like, and then if you can get them. So then like just your cost of goods and things like that, like mm. all increase so quickly. And, um, you know, you don't capture that all in cost. And yeah. so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean... Overall, great year. Did a lot. Learned a lot. Um, excited for 2022 for sure. I'm ready, ready for this year to, to get started and, and see what we can do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that too, that um, even today and yesterday, there were, most of the people I talked to had never been up to the loft before. Okay. And, and some of them had never been to the commons before. And um, so it was like, this is fun. I mean, people are wanting to explore. They're not afraid to talk to people. And But... Um, It'll be interesting to see how we uh, interpret what they're interested in because it's a whole new demographic, yeah. possibly. You know, it remains to be seen what they what they like. But the island is still such a special place, and it's a safe place because you can be outside, and it's flat enough that almost anybody can come. And, yeah, and you drive on. We've got that going for us. Yeah. So no ferries that where you're crowded with contaminated handrails or whatever. <laughs> you know, so. Yes, all the different things I can get all you at this things, point. All the things, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. And and then from like a business and like, I guess, personal perspective on 2022, uh, my wife and I bought the business 20, end of 2019. And so we rolled into 2020 with all these hopes and dreams. Man. <laughs> and then 2020 happens uh, and we're just trying to survive. And then 2021, I don't feel like it's such a weird year in my mind. Um, in some ways it's so short, um, Mm -hmm. whereas 2020 felt very long and, and like, it's almost like there's a year and there's like a six month thing and six (laughs) months was the 2021. And so like looking ahead at 2022, I'm like, okay, I feel like this is a year we kind of know what to expect. I mean, things can obviously change, but in general, we know what's going on with, with the virus. We know what's, what kind of to expect on that. And if things open up more, that's only positive, not negative. Right. Um, and if things stay the same, we've kind of have gone through that. So yeah, I'm excited because I'm like, okay, this is the year where we can kind of get a feel for what we really want to do and what we think we can do within the business, within planning. Um, so that's why I'm excited for 2022. That's cool. Yeah. And, and I, I, I agree what you said about, um, We've done it before. It's like how to wear a mask and how to remember to bring your mask. All that kind of stuff we've done and we're kind of tired of it, but at least it's kind of second nature, you yeah. know. So it's not the, uh, you know, I can't talk to somebody with a mask. I can't breathe. You kind of figured out which mask works for your face. And everybody's just kind of like, this is what we, this is how we roll. And, you know. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, so jumping into 2022, i um, super excited for, again, like I said, uh, planning for this year. I'm trying to be more intentional. Um, I, that's always a – I like the idea of being intentional and writing goals down and setting them. Um, it's when I sit down to do them is when they don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that blank canvas. It's like, oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so a lot of times I just get stuck there. That's as far as I get. I sit down and I'm like – Hmm. What's happening in the news today? Like, it's just not goal setting. So, um, this year I tried to be more intentional in that. I'm still working through a lot of those things, but, um, but I, I want to kind of talk a little bit before we jump into all of what we're going to talk about as far as what goals, more specifics. 
Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the framework about setting goals. Mm. Um, now, most of you listeners probably know this already, and most people probably heard of like smart goals or things. Um, but if you're like me, you forget what those all mean <laughs> in the acronyms. So, um, you know, if you look Google like setting goals for the year, uh, smart goals is going to pop up. And SMART is an acronym, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. Um, and these are all, the reason these were all put into place and deemed as important in setting a goal is if you ask anybody, everyone's going to have an idea of like, well, I would like to do this. I would like to go on a trip to Europe. Yeah. I would like to go visit this place. But there's no timeline. It's not specific of what or where they want to go, just generalized area. And there's no plan or anything in place of why they will get there. And so every year you ask them, oh, what would you like to do this year? Oh, you know, I'd really like to go visit Europe. Okay, cool. What part of Europe? Well, kind of wherever. Yeah. Like England, it would be cool. All right, what part of England? Like you just keep, you have to dig in. And then you've got to set the goal and the timeline. Mm -hmm. And then you have to kind of reverse engineer that whole process. Um. My wife and I were fortunate enough to go to a um, tr uh, like a big business training seminar thing, and they they kind of re they 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 have the same kind of framework for setting a goal, but the way they did it. So the the group we worked uh, went with was the Entree Leadership Group, which many people might know Dave Ramsey as kind of the financial guy uh, on the radio. Um, so he's got a business section as well. And so what, how they define goals, um, so goals that they're set, if you're going to get them done, goals must be specific. So instead of just saying, well, I'd really like to grow my business this year, you say, I want to double my business size this year. Or I want to increase it by 50%. Um, they need to be measurable. So you need to have metrics in place of like, well, 50% of gross, 50% of this department. Like what, what's the specifics that you're really looking for? Right. And how often are you going to measure it too? Yeah. 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 And I always find in the cadence of measuring that months work very well. Yeah. I, this is a weak spot for me because numbers are hard for me, but it's also a comfort because you have something you can look at and you, you can, it's easier to remember why a goal worked if you're looking at it more often than if you're just looking at it at the end of the year, it's like, okay, what happen to make that profitable or not profitable you know if you didn't measure right. up to your goal you know it's it's a goal it's not you know a, a death sentence if you don't get there but at yeah. least you know why you yeah know? yeah it gives you a measuring stick it's it's mm -hmm. like writing your budget at the beginning of the month like you might hit your budget you might go over your budget but at least you knew that you were aiming at this and you missed it yeah but you you're not just looking back and going wow we spent way over our budget last month well, I don't know. What we were doing. Like, I don't know why. Yeah. yeah, and then move on. I interviewed uh, the director of IBM. They had a, a, a an amazing exhibit when I was in college, and I was an exchange student in England. And he was an Italian gentleman, brilliant, and was in charge of the whole traveling exhibit. It was the greenhouse and all natural, and they were talking about the the ecosystem where technology was trying to catch up to be earth friendly and how to marry those two and. And um, he gave me an interview for a project I had going in college. And he he took this book and he drew on it. He goes, here's the deal. And he put two dots. And he said, if you aim for the bottom one, which is the one you really need to meet, you probably won't reach it. But if you aim above it and beyond it to the dream part of it, just, you will go, you might surpass it. You might not make it to that, to the moon, but you can make it beyond the star that you were looking at, you yeah. know? And so that was... That helped me a lot. It's like, go ahead and dream big and aim for it and make goals to reach it. And you'll get further than you, you're realistic. This is what I can do because you, we tend to limit ourselves. You know? Right. Yeah. So, and he was doing amazing things and he had the best looking suit I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. So, you know, he was doing something right. right? <laughs> That's very cool. Um, so, yeah. And I think um, that reminds me of, uh, I want to come back to that more on, um, after we've kind of broken out the framework, but just, I was re-listening to another video that was talking about setting, making dreams and stuff. So mm. I definitely want to come back to that. Cool. I'm going to make myself a note on that. Um, so uh, the other part of the framework that they, they talk about is, um, you know, make sure you have a time limit. Like you want to, 
increase sales by double by the end of the year mm. or, you know, and so then if you set a time limit, as soon as you do that, you've got all the pieces in place. You've got a specific goal. It's measurable and you have a time limit. So then you're into basic math. You're mm-hmm. like, all right, if mm-hmm. I want to double sales, you can, you can multiply that on a calculator, divide that by 12 months. Okay. So now you know exactly what your targets are of what you're trying to do. Um, so you get to reverse engineer it. And then every yeah. month when you check in, you can compare and say, oh, we didn't quite hit our goal um, or we did hit our goal. And so um, so the, he talks about those are the three like first pieces of setting a goal up um, to make sure that there's actually something you're hitting, not just a dream or a, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no real target. Um, and then the last two that they have are more once you have that in place, um, the other thing that goals need to be is they need to be yours, um, they talk about. Hmm. Um, <laughs> he, he references in his talk on this, um, he's like, if you're a doctor because your, your parent wanted you to be a doctor, I don't want you to be my doctor. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a little scary. And, and that could be skilled, but there's, there's something about somebody who's walking in their gifts and their interests that they always have something extra for you. They're, you know, even a painter... Mm-hmm. Um, when I've done commissions of subject matter I didn't love, it, it came out flat. And so I quit doing it because it was like, that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll refer you to a friend who loves what you're looking for. And, and, you know, yeah, I'm turning down money, but it's also my reputation of my style, you know, that people will start to come say, say you, you don't like animals, but you're painting pet portraits because you have the skill to paint a anything that you look at, but all day long you get known as a pet portrait artist and you're miserable. And so the paintings get worse and worse, but you get known as that and you kind of trap yourself. Right. So I think, I think that's really good that be, that the goal be yours, you know, and you got to let your mom and dad down gently, you know? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Well, and this is actually, again, I was going to refer back to this, but I just, just listening back to um, John Acuff, who, is an author mm. and does a lot of books about starting, you know, starting a business and how to um, continue to grow in a business. Um, but one of his questions that was a pivotal point in his career was when somebody asked him because he's an author. So as an author, you get a book completed, you go on a, you know, you go on a big tour, book launch tour. But then from that, you usually get asked to speak, and so right. then you go to these big keynotes and you're doing these things. And he got to this point where he was doing all of these keynotes, um, constantly leaving around. And someone, at, I forget who it was, but someone finally asked him, like, well, John, do you want to be an author who speaks or a speaker who writes books? And he was like, huh. Good question. <laughs> and so that, that made me think of that is like, yeah. you're like, are you want to be a portrait, that portrait person, like that does just self-portraits and sometimes paints on your own? Or do you want someone that paints on your own that sometimes does portraits? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard one because if you don't, you know, anybody in any career will tell you it's going to take time to find your voice or to find your niche or or niche, which depending <laughs> on where, you know. And um, you, you might not know what you want until you try some different things. And that's okay. That experimentation part is, I don't know, I think it's important because it is a brave step to experiment. And um but not to not to say this is who I am. I have to know who I am when I start this. But you can still have measurable goals on the way. I, like, I want to learn how to paint water, so I want to do fifty watercolors of water this year. That's a attainable goal. Yeah. And you may burn a lot of them, but that's okay because you've learned. You know, yeah. and then that applies. You can put that as in your tool belt as something you can pull out when you want it because you know it. Yeah. You know, so goal setting, I guess you and I are learning how to goal set, you know, so this will be in our belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can, I want to go back, though, and ask, what did they say about relevant? That's a hard one for me. Is it relevant to the season, relevant to the subject, or did they talk about that? I probably should have looked this up. More uh, I'm that. putting you on the spot. <laughs> Um, so yeah, when I was reading through, I literally Googled smart goals and this is what popped up as the headlines. That's what the smart stands for. Yeah. And because I knew I wanted to talk more on what entree leadership and how they put their goals together. Yeah, I got you. I didn't dive super deep into each aspect of what they had written. Um, relevant. 
Um, I'm trying to remember because I read like a very brief summary, but again, it's probably gone. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't remember. I think that's something I'm going to look up too because I, I learned these and it was, I, we were talking beforehand. I learned it as Smarty. There was an extra um, letter at the end that, that had to do with celebrate when you achieve the goal, that yeah. it's important your brain. And I heard this just recently um, in another program I'm doing. Um, that you're, when you are reestablishing your thought processes, you know, for instance, if you if your self-talk is always downing yourself, because mm-hmm. we learned to do that in junior high, because that's the cool way to talk. Oh, you know, that's a really good penny. Oh, no, it's not. We deflect. Yes. And it's not very kind to the person. Right. It's not kind to yourself. And that's something um, I learned from infancy, because my culture, um, I grew up in the South, and, you know, we're all, we're very... Oh, thank you, but it's not really. Oh, you know. Oh, I could have done this better. Or yeah. we're always degrading. And um, my mom had a friend who said she would always put that back on the per- the person who gave you the compliment, and she would say, "You are the kindest person. You just made me feel so good. Thank you so much." <laughs> but she would accept the compliment. Yes. And d- and not deflect it. But yeah. she didn't make it all about her either. And and so, but but I was listening to this um, lady who's a a thought specialist and she said one of the main things she teaches her clients is we learn best when we reward our brain when we celebrate Mm -hmm. so if you're doing a new habit maybe you want to do she had just had surgery and she said so my goal was just to bend my knees while my cup of coffee was heating in the microwave you know and she said at first I could only do one and it was extremely painful she said but I celebrated I was like Yay, I'm going to drink my coffee with my legs up because I did one knee bend. <laughs> she goes, now I can do 30 without holding on to anything. Yeah. You know, and so she said, but I celebrated everything. You can give yourself a high five or whatever makes sense for you. But I thought that that's one thing I want to employ and add whatever that would be, an E for encouragement to encourage yourself at the end, the smarty goal or yeah. whatever. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I think that's really important. And I, I do think that a lot of, um, whether self-employed or um, people that are kind of that goal go-getter or just, you know, trying to make things happen, we never take the time to slow down and celebrate. And I, a lot of people I've talked to over this podcast, um, that's some of the things that, like, some of them are learning that right now. Mm. They're like, you know what? I'm learning to take breaks, and I'm learning to say it's okay to say no, and I'm learning to celebrate the my little victories I have on whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the concept, depending on your your view of the kind of the Sabbath concept, where you've got six days of hard work, mm-hmm. and then on the seventh day you look back and you say that was that was good. Yeah, that's that was good, and I'm just gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna hang the painting on my personal wall before I take it into the loft and hang it up to sell. Sometimes I take my paintings home because I like them. Yeah, it's like. I get, I'm going to live with this for a couple of days just on my wall just so I can look at it before it's gone, you know? Yeah. And it, it's, that's been a good practice. That's kind of been a, I felt very selfish at first. It was like, <laughs> you know, it's like, but I don't paint to sell. I sell better when I don't paint to sell. I want to sell. I love to sell, but that's not the motivation behind I'm painting something that will sell. I try not to do that anymore. Yeah. Cause it, the, again, it's just like, ugh, you know, it's not, you, you, you end up imitating and not creating. Yeah, I think, and and it always shows. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of oh, that's a nice shoe, you <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then the last piece that they talk about in a goal that um, for a goal that you want to get accomplished is it needs to be in writing. Mm. Um, they are very. Um, they spend a lot of time talking about this. That's very important. You write these goals down. They're specific. They're measurable. They have a time limit. They're yours. You've decided on them, and then they're in writing. Hmm. Um, and they really aren't as like they're like if it's digitally, that's fine. If it's in a notebook, that's great. Um, but something that you can come back to later on and relook at it, like oh right, this is what my goal mm-hmm, was. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're in January, it slows down a little bit. You have time right now to be able to do this. Yeah. When you're in the middle of summer, things are breaking, customer line is out the door. You don't have time to think about, yeah. well, what, what was that one goal I had again? <laughs> like You'll never time. remember in that moment. But if you I'm sure it, it was well. bigger than a double scoop. But I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the framework I've looked at in setting up the goal. And then, and then kind of an additional follow-up question to this 
is, uh, again, this is how they word it. They, they ask, what, is, what must be true um, that is not true today in order to get there, hmm. in order for that hmm. goal to be realized? Because if, that, if everything was true already for that goal to be realized, you would already be there. Right. So what does your business, what does your personal life, what does your time need to look like for this to be true? Hmm. Um, so in my head, it's kind of like reverse engineering and looking back like, okay, if this was going perfectly, exactly how I think it should work, um, and that that's flawed, but like if it worked exactly how I thought it should work, what should that look like? That's um, so good. We um, One of the things in the mentoring group that I'm in called Created to Thrive or, um, is... Um, Matt talks about the the founder talks about um, it's it's a classic example, but he he brings it up a lot. And so it's when you're setting a goal and when you're setting how much time you're going to spend doing you know, out of your week, you put your big rocks in first. You know, you put your family time, you put your um, creative time, you put your um, meetings, your manager meetings, the people or or whatever. You put those big rocks in first because what happens is if you put in the little stuff and you let it take over the big rocks kind of spill out and you don't have time. But if you put the big rocks in first, then the pebbles fit around that and then the <laughs> sand fills in. And I saw that done physically one time and it, uh, it was crazy because yeah. you have the same amount of sand, the same amount of pebbles, the same rocks. But if you do it reverse order, it won't fit in the vessel. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. But I thought that was, that was really, um, so I've been doing a lot of that. Just thinking about what are my big rocks? What are the five big things that are important to me? Mm. You know, time with rich, some family time with our kids, which we really have to plan for because they they are gone now. They're adults. Yeah. So we have to plan ahead, you yeah. know, um, things like that. Yeah. And then creative time, studio time, how much, you know, blocking out hunks of time, which painting in the loft is, is its own animal. And I love it. I don't think some people would hate it. I happen to love being interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> so, because then I turn around and look at it again, and it makes me step away from it and look back at it. And then when it's quiet, I just go for it. Yeah. But I think some people would hate that because yeah. they can paint for larger chunks of time. But for me, it, it has actually helped because yeah. I'm more focused, you know, when I'm doing that. And then for my days, when you break that down into a day, um, I just have two pages where I blurb on one page. It's just a mess. And I just write down... Don't forget to take out the laundry from the dryer. And don't forget, I mean, all those scattered thoughts, you know, and I just have it open. And if I'm in the middle of painting and I was like, I got to remember to do that, I just write it down. Yeah. But then on my daily page, I have uh, three things here and three things at home. So just the three most important things. Mm -hmm. and, and I work on those and I don't go to the next three until I'm focused on those. And sometimes the other things usually just take care of themselves or yeah. they weren't that important. And that has really helped me like a bucket load yeah you know like what one thing can i do toward this goal what's yes. the next step and like you said reverse engineer bake it we were talking about this the other day of baby steps because mm -hmm. i tend to overwhelm myself i gotta do you know I'm, i was like i'm not 25 people you know yeah. um i mean the comments has the staff i don't you know it's just right. me and it's like if i do the main things the other things kind of fall into place yeah and um like planning out the featured artists, then the podcast guests for you. I know who to tell you is coming and, you know, <laughs> and you get to interview them far enough ahead. So it's not a headache and that kind of thing. Um, and then they're excited about it and looking forward to it. And, um, but then um, just keeping the big things big, yeah, you know, and, and enjoying them, you know, and not, cause I, t I tend to be way too detail oriented and totally short circuit myself <laughs> but yeah oh baby steps so like I just went on a tangent but uh we were talking about that that baby steps are so important you know because I tend to think I have to take giant steps mm -hmm. and if I break it down into what's the <clears throat> next thing I have to do on this goal say um I need to say I want to build a greenhouse I'm not a you know well what plants grow in this region you have to decide what plants you have to decide where you're going to build it well what's the next step research plants so you bake it break it down into that little baby step and then I was looking back on my son in particular um the minute he learned to walk he was running <laughs> and I was in very good shape because I was chasing <laughs> <I was looking. laughs> 
he just loved to run. I remember one time at the lights of Christmas, I'm pregnant with our daughter, and he takes off running after the, the hayride wagon. Oh, no. I'm like, Davis. And they're egging him on, going, come on, you can catch us. I was like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> And so I was reminded, you know, just because it's a baby step doesn't mean you're not covering a lot of ground, you know. So <laughs> baby uh, steps get you a good long distance. You uh, know? I love that. I love uh, the, the mind picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, another thing I want to throw in this before we jump into it um, is the, I was just re-watching this, uh, and this is referencing John Acuff again. And I'll actually link to this video in, this, in the show notes because I really enjoyed watching it. But he's going over, this is actually his 2021 goal planning. Um, But he was like, here's some questions that can help you kind of come up with some ideas. Hmm. And he said, one of the things he talks about a lot in his books and stuff is like fear. And our minds will try and trap us in what we are really capable of and what we should or shouldn't do. So he will trick his mind. And so one of his questions he asked was, um, uh, I know this is impossible, But I would like to blink. Cool. And so he's like, when you say, I know it's impossible, your mind goes, oh, he's just making it up. It doesn't matter. It shuts off the fear thing. Oh, interesting. So you're just dreaming and dreams can't hurt you. Right. Yeah. So there's that. And then the other trick he did, which actually is I've now integrated into my my rapid fire questions for this year, um, because I think it's a fun, I think it's a fun question, but I think it's also really fascinating. It's, I know this is weird. But I've always wanted to blink. Oh, fine. And again, it's just like, there's things that you may have thought like, you know, I know I'm never going to probably be able to do this and maybe I won't. But like, I would love to do this. Like, this would be a cool thing to try or do. or um, And by, again, by attaching that tag to it, hmm. like your brain kind of like, oh, well, he's just dreaming. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect me because it's not real. So... Um, anyway, just as you think about your, your goals and plans for this year, uh, those are some great questions to ask yourself. Um, so again, that. I'll link that video. He does a great job explaining. And, um, for any of you who haven't heard of John Acuff, um, he's also very funny, um, and witty. So like, these aren't just like, he sits in front of a camera and it's like this very boring, like, do, 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 do. Like he's very entertaining. So be sure to check out the video. Cool. Well, there's the goal setting. So I hope you guys take this week. Write down your goals, use what we talked about in this episode, and I'd love to hear what those are. Again, you could email me at voice at commandocommons.com. Uh, and be sure to come back next week to find out what we're doing um, and see where we're at and see what goals we have set for this year. Thanks for joining me this time, and I'll see you next time.